Hi everyone, it's me, Angelica, how are you? <clears throat> this is gonna be um, a difficult video for me to do, and I'm doing it for my own healing, and I'm also doing it in hopes that it brings some healing to you and your life or your situation. And I'm not sure how you'll take it. Some people may not take it well because it may trigger in them emotions from the past that, um, you know, you haven't dealt with yet. Or um, anyway, I and I have a lot of fear in doing this video, just so you know. But I've had fear before in doing videos. And when I've done them, like the Amine video that I did, which I will place below this video because um, the Omni work has made me feel stronger in expressing my emotions and expressing what has happened in the past. Another reason I haven't done this um, video, and this video is called Staying with the Fear and Negativity, and I'm going to talk about my childhood. I've I've talked a little bit about my childhood before. I think I skim over things in hopes to keep things more positive and to show you that it's no longer the case for me. And I think that's not truly helpful to most people because most people are in a lot of pain and in a lot of fear and in a lot of, of emotional pain. And when people see me really happy and doing my teacher thing, because I'm really good at teaching, I like teaching, they don't really understand where I've come from and what I've actually moved through. And to show you that it is possible and that we all carry an immense amount of pain. Now, some people's paths um, have been more traumatizing than others uh, for certain reasons, depending upon what your mission and purpose is. Um, and I haven't done a video like this before because I didn't want to hurt my mom or dad and I didn't want to um, have people think things about um, my family. However, this is the problem with society. This is the reason that our planet cannot heal. By keeping things hidden, by hiding um, or overlooking, and I'm already getting emotional, by sweeping it under the rug and acting like everything's okay, we cannot heal. It comes out in other ways. It comes out in, in reactive, emotional, um, you know, um, out of the blue, random things start coming out when we don't address the issues, when we're in denial, and when we feel shame about our past. Now, you all see me now. However, where I have come from, it has been a really long journey. And I'm going to explain that to you now. And it's because I faced my fear. It's because I faced and challenged, you know, the patterning in my own family. And um, it's the only thing that's brought me through. So, um, gosh, I don't really know where where to start with this. I do know um, what I want to what I want to say. Last night, I started feeling a lot of stuff coming up, and I think it was triggered by um, me talking to a friend a day or two before that, and somehow got pulled into speaking about my childhood to her. And after I did, I felt really ashamed. Like I felt scared. Um, and I felt like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have shared so much personal information. Um, because it makes me feel shameful. You know, it makes me feel like um, that I had something to do with it. And the thing is, is that, oh, I'm getting emotional. Um, the thing is, is that a lot of us feel this way about our past. And the thing to keep in mind is that um, we didn't do this. Either did my parents. These are passed on patterns, generational curses. I think that's what, that's like a biblical thing, I think, that have been passed down. And it's very true. So it's not my parents' fault. It's not their parents' fault. We're healing this now. And if we don't heal it, our planet will never evolve into what we have envisioned. So I come from a family of extreme alcoholism, um, emotional abuse, physical abuse, um, drug addiction.
and again, if if like my mom or dad sees this, I love you, and we've we've they healed a lot. However, they're in denial, and they don't want to talk about it. Um, they've gotten better, of course, but 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 the denial is the problem with this. Okay, the not coming forward and talking about it, so we can release the pain and quit the blame and shame on ourselves mainly. And I think I put blame and shame on myself. For, move, for deciding to be born into a family where this is going on because I, I'm just a strong soul and I knew that I could heal it within myself. And the only way to heal it within ourselves is to come out and talk about it. So when I shared my story a few days ago with someone and I started feeling this fear, and then I realized that this is a big block in my life, that um, I'm wanting to move into new things, into higher levels, and I am. But I really want to clear this block within, and I didn't know what it was. But last night, I could really feel it. And I remember Pat from Omni, and I'm going to put the video below, saying, you know, stay with it. And she's so right. You have to stay with the fear and the pain. If you, if you move around it, and us spiritual people have this thing. Now, there's, 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 the ones that are more connected to the spiritual realm, they're going through the spiritual awakening. And then there's those who are more grounded and physical who are going through spiritual awakening and they have more trouble opening up to that. Like I feel totally comfortable in the higher realms. I feel totally comfortable leaving my body, leaving the pain, um, moving around it so that I can feel really happy think that I feel happy. However, underneath that, the deeper layers, it's still there. And like I said, it comes out in, in other ways. You know, people have road rage, you know, people hold it in for years and then boom, all this stuff happens. So again, this is why we have to start talking about this, talking about our past, understanding each other, understanding that we all carry the same pain. Now, some of you may have not come from traumatizing childhoods, However, things could have happened to you in your childhood or in your life that affected you just the same. So again, I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to just talk a little bit about my childhood. Um, so I'm the oldest of six kids. I, um, I have one brother and four sisters. And from a very young age, I took it upon my shoulders to make it my responsibility to make sure that they were all safe. Not only my younger siblings, but also my parents. Um, because, like I said, alcoholism and drug addiction runs in my family. My mother's father died of alcoholism. Um, my mom's mom was an alcoholic. My dad's mom was an alcoholic. My dad's dad was extremely bipolar from what I hear. And... Um, and he died before I was born or when I was really young, maybe one or two. I didn't know him. So this runs in the family. So, of course, my dad, my beautiful father that I love very much, he tried to fight the alcoholism in himself because he's actually a very um, emotional person and actually uh, spiritual. However, his own emotional pain that he wasn't allowed to speak about because he was a man back then. And back then, you know, you couldn't do that as a man. Um, even still today, it's hard for men to come out and speak about their emotions um, because in our society, men are supposed to be strong and just, you know, deal with it. Well, that's not working anymore. Um, and it creates these kinds of problems. So. Anyway, my dad, um, you know, he was really good until I think I was about two or so and the alcoholism got him and um, he started drinking really heavily and in working with alcoholism and drug addiction, myself and in my own life, I recognized that, you know, I can't have a drink of alcohol. If I drink a, dro a drop of alcohol, I could ruin my entire life in one day. I haven't drinking alcohol in probably eight years. Um, so because of our family, we drink one drop and we drink the whole bottle. And then, you know, it's, it's really bad. So um, some people are just, they have that. <clears throat> so my mom was quite codependent and my dad was trying to be more of the masculine man, even though he wasn't. And he couldn't control his emotions. And he would drink um almost every single day and terrorized the family. Um, he would beat up my mom and um, 
I would be a witness to this on a daily basis. I felt I felt on a daily basis that um, that you know when you're young, you think your parents are they're your world. They're the ones who are like making sure that you're surviving, okay? And um, when you think your parents are gonna die every day, you don't feel safe. And I've never felt safe. And that's why this is coming up right now because there's still a little aspects of this within me. So I grew up with this my whole entire life. Um, fighting, violence, abuse, alcoholism. And um, you know, I started drinking and stuff like that in my teenage years and then my early 20s, um, you know, the same thing until I stopped. So, um, and healed myself. So you can stop drinking or doing drugs, but you have to do the work and heal the emotions and, or it's not beneficial. So, um, you know, I went in my first relationship was extremely abusive. I found someone just like my father and on and on. Um, it wasn't until I met my twin that I was saved from that cycle. And so thank God for for that and for um, even though it was extremely painful process with the twin flame um, meeting and in working through that, I recognize that that's what saved me. Um, however, I still to this day deal with that and I still to this day deal with it because again, we have this mechanism where we want to move around the pain and act like everything's okay because we want to be okay. And that's a natural feeling um, to, to want everything to be okay. And I do. And I'm a positive person. And I love everyone. I love my mother. I love my father. However, the part that I don't love is the fact that they don't want to talk about this. No one wants to talk about their childhoods. I've, um, in the people that I've worked with and the, my, you know, friends and all of this and talking about these emotions, I realized that most people have gone through some kind of really, really intense, um, tra traumatizing experience in their life. And the other part of that is that they don't talk about it. We don't, we don't feel safe coming out in a way to others and, um, telling people about it because it starts to bring up the feelings and it starts to make us feel shameful. I feel shameful coming from that family and I feel shameful that I started to walk into that path because it's all I knew at that point. Um, but we don't have to feel shame anymore because like I said, it's not any of their faults. They didn't do it and they feel extreme guilt, extreme. My father lives with guilt on a daily basis. He feels so bad all the time and you know so does my mom but they carry this pain and hold it within and they they it's not their fault if we share it and we speak about it then it can go ahead and release and heal and we can stay in the fear and bring it to each other I'd like to at some point in the future you know have some kind of group um, emotional healing like call or um, some kind of group Google Hangouts call where we can get together in a small group of 10 or so and share our stories with each other and be there for each other and understand each other because we feel that we're all alone in this and we're not all alone in this. We have been traumatized and we feel like it's our fault and it's not our fault. And I think I've got, I was scared. I think my mom did see one video at one point prior where I did start to share about my childhood and she got really offended and actually went to my kids and showed them a picture of me at Disneyland um, with my sisters. Because we did, like, that wasn't all bad. Like, you know, my dad was a great businessman and he made a lot of money. And so we were able to travel and do all the fun things that seem, you know, they weren't fun to me because I was traumatized. However... There was, you know, a picture of me at Disneyland with my sisters, but what she failed to mention is that I was at Disneyland with my uncle who was a heroin addict and my, um, my mother and father were doing heroin in the hotel room at the time. So it's like, you know, like we can sweep this stuff under the rug. However, it, 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 it 
because it is painful when we talk about it and I feel a lot of pain and I, my hands tremble when I speak about it and I get upset but the thing is is that I didn't do that you know that's not mine to carry anymore and I can't rescue or save my mother or father any of my siblings or anything like that all I can do is work on me and all you can do is work on you and so when you share your story with another or you talk about these things with others it, it, it brings a freedom now it doesn't bring it right away like again I'm, I'm feeling really uncomfortable even even sharing these things because um, people are like oh wow you know and it's it, it, it's the judgment it's the judgment that keeps these things going um, so I need to not judge myself anymore for that because it's not my fault. And not only that, I've come such a long way and I've done so much work and I've, I've been that person to my kids to show them that that's not the way to be and they won't have that either. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, however, it's just, it gets really tricky when we're sitting in the fear um, we want to escape it and we want to move around it and we want to, um, we want to do something to distract ourselves from the pain. We all have the pain, you know, we're all connected. We're all one. And the only way to get through the pain is to move into it, is to sit with it, is to feel it and to forgive ourselves mainly. It's, it's myself that I couldn't forgive. It's my, I had judgments about myself. I felt shame about myself that I had somehow created this, but I didn't, I didn't create this. Um, none of us did. None of us did. Not even my mother and father. They didn't either. They didn't know any different. That's what they were born into. That's what they lived on a daily basis when they were kids. Alcoholic, drug addicted parents, abuse, and on and on. And their parents did that to their parents. The only way through is to talk about it and to understand. So I want all of you to know that I understand. That's why I can move into emotional pain so well with others. It's why I can, um, you know, come on YouTube and talk about this because I recognize the, the importance of, of doing this kind of work. And I recognize the importance of, you know, um, taking this to another and having someone understand. Not everyone's going to understand. And if a person doesn't understand this, it's because they're scared of their own feelings. They're scared of their own emotions and something about it is triggering their own pain and they don't want to feel that. So they're going to lash out and be judgmental about it to you. But like I said, every time I've shared this, every time I've gone to Amine, every time I've worked through my emotions in regards to being so scared, and this is another thing I want to show you how far you can come with this work if you decide to move into your emotions and to face them and to talk about them with others and to not hide these things anymore. It was so bad in my early 20s, I think, um, the fear that I had. And again, I, I deal with a lot of fear. Um, because I, I never knew, I thought we were going to all die every single day. And, um, you know, it's been good in the sense that, that I do the work that I do. However, I realize that I still have some of it. Um, in my early 20s, and I think I brought this up in a video in the past, but I'll just re, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, I couldn't sleep at night. I would never sleep. I would go into like sort of a sleep, but not really and when I would wake up in the morning, I'd jump up out of bed, ready for fight or flight, like defensive, scared, arms up, ready to protect myself in case somebody was going to come and like attack me pretty much. Um, a fight or flight. I lived with severe, severe stress on a daily basis, severe fear, severe, um, you know, like I, 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 tr I would shake in my daily life. I would just start shaking. Um, and when I do the Amine work, that's what happens. Um, when I move into that fear, um, you know, when you shiver, when it's cold, like that, my jaw shivers and I start shaking cause I, cause it's a lot of fear. And, um, that's what I move in to release. Um, every time I do the Amine work, um, but a lot of people see me and I'm like, I'm so happy and I've moved through a lot of that already. Um, but there's still, just want to tell you, like, we're working on this together. Like until the planet is like healed, until there's like not 
abuse going on in the world until like the children aren't starving until like all this stuff is like healed like we're going to be going through this together you know we're all connected in unity we're all one and so how can we say that we have nothing left to fix when there's still this going on i mean i can't stop doing what i'm doing when when i know this stuff's going on because it's going on within me still and it's going on out it's we're all connected all of us are part of this um but i used to, like i said I, I i thought last night when i was feeling that fear and how to resolve it within myself i thought back to how i used to be my old self how I used to, my distracted, my, the way that I distracted myself, and I've talk, talked about this as well, is that I used to just try to help others. What does everybody else need? Totally ignore myself. Or I would go into this like positive space of like, everything's great, everything's wonderful, la la la, you know, and I, and I still do that. I've gotten more real though now and gotten more in my body, more into my pain. When I say coming into your body, moving more into the pain, moving more into those feelings, um, to where I can sleep now. I, I can sleep. I'm just like, wow, I can sleep. I wake up and I don't jump out of bed thinking that like the world's coming to an end or that I have to fight to, you know, or run really quick or like call the police because like, you know, something's going on where someone's going to, um, attack, you know, somebody or me or whatever. Um, it's scary, you know, but this is, the reality of what we're facing and and me I've never had a past life on this planet coming to this planet was extremely terrifying to me um, coming from I come from you know where I come from it's just like so much light so much love that this to me is like I just don't understand but I I took it on so that I could feel it so that I could face it so that I could move it through my own energy field so I could help others and so we can turn the generational curses around so that we can stop being repeats and that's what I call them um, repeating you know many 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 lifetimes on this planet and shift it into this higher love you know um, this is what we came for. A lot of us that a lot of you that watch this channel have come here for the same purpose. We came here at this time to take the stuff on to transmute it into higher love. But in the process, we actually have to experience it and go through those things that we ne we didn't necessarily ask for or want to do. But that's part of it. And the joy and the healing comes in when we can share it, when we can become close with each other. One other thing, this is a very long video, and I thank you for watching this with me. Um, this has been a big problem with me and my twin and why I can't open up to intimate relationships fully. And um, what was represented in that all along was having to open up and allow someone to love me and come really closely into my space, even in the bad times. I just wanted to always, you know, again, sweep it under the rug, act like it doesn't, is not there. And like, I'm fine. I got this all by myself. I'm independent. I don't need anybody because I was scared of people because especially men, because um, not all men, but certain men that triggered those feelings of my father when I was younger. And, um, so again, these blockages, um, um, not allowing ourselves to move into the fear and the pain and staying in it and talking about it and sharing it become blocks within our lives. They don't allow us to bring the things in that we're wanting. And there's a lot of books out there, you know, the law of attraction and you know, keeping it positive. And of course, that's my thing. I love that. But what they don't talk about and share is the negativity that we feel and the um, the fear that we feel and how to move through that so that we can actually be positive most of the time so we can, you know, sleep at night so that we don't feel everyone's going to attack us when we're walking down the street, you know. We have to stay with ourselves, stay with the fear, talk about it, share it, understand it, and have those who understand it. Now, not everyone's going to understand this video, but some of you, it really will, and that's why I'm doing it. 
Um, and, and again, for my own healing, to share with you some of these things. Um, again, that's the blockages. Why all these, you could read 20 million uh, law of attraction books and you wonder why it doesn't work for you and you wonder how to move through the negativity. They don't tell you that. They, What they tell you is um, when you start to lessen the negative feelings, when you start to the fear goes away when you're not stressed out all day. That's when these things manifest. Well, yes, they do manifest. And things have manifested in my life from me releasing a lot of fear. But how did I release that fear? That's the book that we need. And I plan to write a book like that in in the near future, you know, um, in my own experience with that. And every single time I've moved into my fear, every single time I've shared my pain, and if you see the video, the Amine video below that I'll put below, um, every single time I've shared myself in a vulnerable way and gotten emotional and shared my story, it's been super uncomfortable for a little while, maybe a day or two, I say 48 hours, then boom, I rise to a new level. Why? Because I'm moving through the blockage. I'm, I'm releasing it. I'm seeing it. I'm staying with the little girl that was traumatized. That little girl was traumatized and she still lives in me and she still runs the show in certain ways, in certain areas of my life. Not all, but some. Okay, so now that we understand, you know, we can't just act like everything's okay when it's not. And we also don't want to get super angry or start projecting on people our own pain, you know, when other people do stuff and they trigger us. But we do want to stay with ourselves. We do want to stay in a place where um, we can stay with that little girl and recognize, well, that's not going on anymore. I'm no longer living in a traumatizing situation. And yes, I did have to take myself out of relationships for a while so that I could heal myself and fix myself and so that I could really feel those things in me and heal them. Because no one else can fix you or heal you. Only you can. But in sharing our stories with each other, that is very healing. When you have someone that can hear your, your traumatizing past and take that in and, and, and love you and hold you in that, that's when it heals, you know, and we we don't trust that because we've shared our stories with the wrong people that couldn't face their own pain. So they lashed out at us and told us it wasn't OK to be that way. Well, you have a friend in me and I've been through it. And I mean, if I wrote a book about my life story, you would be shocked that I am who I am today. Coming from that and that I am who I am today. Um even though I went through all that. And I went through that so that we could heal, so that I could heal, so that you could heal, so that we could love each other and we could transform this planet. I love you all so much, and I hope you have an excellent day. And if you're feeling fearful or you're feeling in pain, Stay with it and it starts to melt. The only time it doesn't go away is when we distract from it or think we shouldn't be feeling this way, feel something else. You know, sometimes we eat, sometimes people drink alcohol, whatever it is. Don't do that. Sit in your pain. I'm telling you, it'll release within 48 hours. If you do that, it actually releases within a couple hours if you sit, really sit with it. But it can never hurt you. It can never kill you. The feelings feel again like it's happening again. It feels like you're in that little girl in that traumatizing situation again. But you're not. You're not. You're safe. And all the angels are protecting you. And, and, and this is just the process that we're moving through in order to be our greatest selves. Okay? So if you're feeling in fear, if you're feeling pain, if you're feeling like you have no foundation to stand on, know that you are protected. I'm just telling you, you are so protected. You are so loved. No one is going to hurt you anymore once you allow yourself to feel into this. And the physical pain will go away. The spiritual awakening symptoms that you're having that you can't quite figure out, you know, the sleepless nights the all of that it will release okay and then you'll be able to feel the pain of the world like i used to stay up and be traumatized about all the little children being hurt in the world i couldn't sleep because i was a little child being hurt 
And you see how this happens now. You see how our pain is connected to the rest of the world. And so now I don't stay up at night because I'm healing myself. Because I know if I'm strong, I can help those little children. But I can't help those little children if I'm drowning. You can't save someone that's drowning by drowning with them. You have to heal your own stuff, get well yourself, and then you can offer them a raft or whatever. You know, my, my friend, my really good friend um, said that. You can't. You can't save someone by drowning with them. It's so true. But, but we also don't want to look within ourselves and feel that pain. It's so scary to us, you know? We, we just want to move away from it. Okay, super long video. I love you all so much. And I'm so glad that you are with me in this and that you are working on your own emotional pain and that we are all together in this. There's no shame. You know, I... I don't shame myself as much anymore, and that's why I'm even able to speak about this. So have a great day, and I'd love to hear your comments about your story or anything that came up for you during this video. All right, bye-bye.